Okay, the Pistons have the number five pick, and we're kind of zeroing in on Ivy and Sharp. We're going to compare and contrast these two and see what's a better fit for the Pistons, who we would rather have. So, Craig, when you just look at these guys, I guess on a high level, and, you, and you're looking and comparing them, what sticks out between these two guys for you? I think the difference between the, the biggest difference between the two guys for me is provenness. And I think that at least with Jaden Ivey, there is a level of provenness throughout Big Ten play. And I'm not saying it's top level. With, with Shaden Sharp, it's purely measurables. It's purely like we know he's a good athlete. He was the number one recruit in his class when he reclassified. And he came and he was now in this class. They re-ranked him as the number three recruit. Some had him higher. I think they put him behind Chet and... Uh, Jabari or something like that. So we know that there was that. Can I just talk for a second about some of the concerns I have with Shaden Sharp? And then yeah, I'll absolutely. go Let's start with him. Do. Let's, yeah, let's start so, with Sharp. All right. You want to start with Sharp. So you want concerns or the good stuff? Give me the uh, good stuff with him. Yeah. Yeah. The good stuff is he can jump out of the gym. Um, he, he seems to have thick legs that are, are built. They're sturdy, man. And, and it's just like, he can jump out of the gym. He's shown a pretty good jump shot. It's a little unorthodox of a shot, but he gets good elevation on his jump shot. Uh, and there is just a ceiling there that you can see, like he's a very, very good athlete. So those are the good things on him. Yeah, it, and it's like the guy, it's like all just, I know because well, it's he, high school tape. Exactly. And that's what I was just going to say. It's like, when you read up on him, it's like, this guy can score. He can score. Yeah. And it's like, maybe I know <laughs> I, I felt like I could score a little in like junior high, you know, it's like I could <laughs> score too, but that's, what's so hard about him. The good you and I just hit it. It's like the good is he can score against, I don't know. We don't know. So I, sorry, go ahead with the bad, but that's well, all it's we just know. About so hard. Game. I mean, the bad is little things like Calipari. So found some stuff in the deep web of Calipari talking about this. And it's like, cause I really wanted to get the bottom of why didn't he play? So he didn't get to Kentucky until like January 1st. So the season's halfway in, he gets to Kentucky, he reclassifies, he starts practicing with them. And Calipari is doing an interview where he basically says like, this dude can jump out of the gym. He's flying. He's got alley-oops like, He's a ridiculous athlete. And then he goes to take a jump shot and he's getting like this far off the ground when they're in scrimmage type plays. He's like, Hey, something's not right here. So then he goes and he talks to the parents of Shaden Sharp and he talks to Shaden. He's like, what's the plan? Do you want to play for us this year? And they said, well, the plan was still that we wanted to have him come prepare for next year to play for Kentucky and then declare after that. So Calipari is like, okay, then that's what we'll do. And I think Cal didn't think he was ready. I don't mm -hmm. think he thought he was ready in January. And so that kind of scares me a little bit. Like you're not ready to play at Kentucky, but we think you're going to be ready for the NBA. I mean, it's yeah. scary, man. It, it is. It's a little too scary. And we talk about this with the lions where our margin for error is not, we've just been so bad for so long. And I guess a lot of these lottery teams feel the same way. We're like, we've been bad for a long time. Yeah. We can't mess up this. And that feels like red flag city to me. Um, but at, then again, you're, you're that potential, but potential can get translated into like, we don't know. So we're just going to say he's got potential. That's a big difference. Like I literally don't know. So, and you can't yeah. just say he's got potential. I just don't know. I think with a guy like him, if I have the ninth pick or the 10th exactly. pick, I'm like, go for it. Go yep. for it. I just think five is it's a scary part. And then and and so here's the thing about him. Of course, there's all the potential in the world. But have you seen the highlights of Jaden Ivey? Because oh. there's a ton of potential there, too. Uh, speaking of other guys who only get this far off the ground on their jump shot, it's a set oh, shot, man. right? So but he definitely gets off the ground when he's going to the hoop. Like there's no problem there. Like Ivy has shown that he's an elite transition athlete too. When he gets, when he gets going and he's able to do some things as well. So, yeah. And, and you know, that's what you and I have been talking about with what well, you made the point with, um, with Ivy is that yep. at Purdue, he was not running an NBA offense. And that's, what's really weird about this is almost sharp could I mean, almost benefit from not ever playing it in college. Now, 
I would rather I would rather see him. I would rather watch him rather than just be like, oh, it's maybe he benefited from not playing in old school college. Yeah. But you know what I mean? But I but that is one interesting way to look at it is he never got into the college like, yeah, it's more, you know, like the sets and the different things that college can kind of mess you up, maybe. But more, he's just going to bypass that where Ivy, you brought that up where he's at Purdue. They got two guys in the paint all the time. You can't, it's like, get out of the way. And that's what they're going to do in yeah. the NBA. So Sharp's going to have that too. So, and then again, pair him with Cade. He just, that feels good with Cade. You can put anybody with Cade and it just feels really good. But these two guys, but Ivy, especially you've seen him do it and you've seen him or, and you've, and you'd like to see him in a pro offense. That's what you yeah. really would like to see. So yeah. I don't know. I, that's why Ivy always just kind of, if I had the choice, I, I, I like Ivy. Yeah, I think it's like a poor man's version of John Morant, right? And and I'm not saying he's Ja. I'm not even saying he's close because if he was close, I'd be, we need to draft Ivy right now. I think there is a world where Ivy becomes the best player out of this draft. It's just, it's like a 5% chance type of world. Yeah, it's yep. not what, it's not the high level thing. Here's the, here's the struggles with Ivy that I've been hearing mm-hmm. as I'm listening to different beat writers and things like that. Um you could watch the tape and see his other teammates getting mad at him for his lack of effort on the defensive end. So like there was just absolute lapses. Now when you're being tasked with carrying the offense night in night out and you're playing heavy minutes in college. Yeah. You probably are going to take place off. That's right. Um, I've heard some attitude things and I've said on this show before, that's not for us to determine. Like we talked about that with the Lions when uh, we were talking about different players in the draft. We're like, yeah. we can't determine what the attitude is. Um, you, you know who I'm talking about, but like, we can't. But with Ivy, uh, you hear things like that. You hear that he was very unhappy when he was playing in the the junior whatever international basketball, like, cause he wanted to have the ball in his hand all the time. He didn't want to be the off guard. And it's like, Ivy, I don't care how electric you are and how good you are. Cade's going to have the ball in his hand. Yeah. So I think I do worry, like anybody can play next to Cade. The question you have to ask yourself is, can anybody play next to Killian? And I don't think that, and you have to decide like, is Killian still a guy that you trust and you think can develop or cause he's still 20 by the way. So uh, yeah. like it's, it's, it's one of those things with, with Ivy where I don't know if he fits with those two guys Yep. because then you have three guys that are ball dominant. And I think Killian's best role is if you have a guy who can be a spot up shooter, he doesn't demand the ball as much and you give him time to work on his own creation and shot creation. And that's okay. You let that develop and you allow Cade and Killian to do the majority of the ball handling next year. Yeah. And, and you, you took the, I mean, you said exactly what I was going to say about Ivy's negatives is his defense. And Mm -hmm. I just think to myself, it's hard. Like you said, when he's playing heavy minutes, he's ball dominant. He's, he's, he's doing a lot of energy on the offensive side, kind of hard. And then again, we don't need, that's the last thing. Well, not the last thing, but it's not like a huge part of like, we kill man, we got to have defense or we got to be able to stop the ball. We, you know, defense is good enough. And so, it's, he's going to come into a team that we can play good enough defense. It's not like he has to be a great, great defensive player. And I still don't think he's terrible. So Ivy, I, I, I just don't like the fit overall, just in general. Yeah. But if between these two, I like him and I wouldn't hate this pick. And you said it perfect. He could be the best player in this draft. And you're like, yes, could be. Could. Yes, yes, he could. It's a, it's a low chance but he could he at least has that opportunity i think you get pick seven eight nine and you're there's no way that person's going to be that player is going to be the best player in the draft so at least we have a chance at five but it's just lower yeah it's just lower and i and i will say i'll reiterate with this like this is kind of a negative video isn't it like i don't think i don't think we love either of these guys because there's questions but when you're picking at five especially in the nba draft you're getting someone and you're you're saying what do they project as it's not what are they now? If you're just drafting the most ready-made prospect and they're not going to improve, then, okay, Jabari Smith's your guy, I guess. And because yeah. he's a ready-made shooter and defender, so let's just get him and let's move on with our life, right? But that's not what it is. And I think this is just a struggle for me because you watch Ivy and you see the explosiveness. You see 
his ability to get to the basket. He's not a horrible shooter. I don't know what it lo- I don't know what it projects like to the next level. But you see a guy like that and you're like, "All right, that's not bad." But then you have a guy like Sharp where it's like all the measurements in the world and, and all that kind of stuff and you still are wondering to yourself like I have no idea. I yeah. have no idea what this guy is going to be. And I will say with Ivy too, he shot 36% from 3. I'm always a big big proponent on three point percentage and what it looks like that was on five attempts per game. Like mm. that's heavy attempts. So with hoisting, yeah. Hoisting with, with the defense in his face. Cause he was the only threat. Like, let's be honest. So when you look at that, you're like, okay, there's something, there's something to be said there for sure. Yeah. And, and I think for us too, it doesn't feel good because that's who we've drafted the last two years. Guard guard. Now we've got yeah. kind of got, I don't want to say fringe guard, but like, it, you know, again, if, if he's a stud, if he's job, then you're like, this is no problem. Let's come on yeah. in. You know, we'll make room. But this is like, well, so Troy know, Weaver makes his money. Yeah. Then it's like, well, this Killian, you know, it's just like it just doesn't feel as good as no. a wing or a big guy, you know, seven. You know, you, we just that's why it feels a little weird. But yeah, I think so. Like yeah. you said, overall negative tone on this. But there, there's a chance here for the, these there's guys. A chance. Here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll break down each one of these guys leading uh, even further leading into the draft. And I think what you'll hear us say is that Ivy has the potential to be very good. And of course, Sharp has the potential. As weird as it sounds, Sharp is probably the better fit, just has a high bust rate. It's a high rate (laughs) that he could bust. High probability of bust. And think uh, about how many top 10 guys come and into the into college basketball and they're just not great. Oh, no. Like they're just not great. That's what I find so fascinating about that top 10 pick. You literally probably hit on half and the other half, you're you're just like maybe you're you're over from overseas maybe you can be luca you know it's like maybe and if you are you, our franchise is set if you're not then whoops but it's, it's like high. i gotta take a chance it's uh, yeah it's not waiting. likely yeah and yeah there's a few guys each year of course but then after that it's like let's let's take swings for the fences and we're probably going to strike out but if we can hit a home run then your franchise is then you're great golden. yep then you're so, great um yeah. Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you yep. subscribe. That means you will get our future videos just recommended to you and are showing you right when they come out. And um, with that, we'll see you on the next one. See you.